Hey everyone, we have just started a new unit and we want to look at a really important definition that we're going to use throughout this course, which is an empire. And so in your notes, I want to make sure that you have this as an empire is basically when one king has control over a very large territory. They have some sort of administrative support. You'll hear throughout this course a lot the word bureaucracy. So it's basically how do they rule and how do they keep kind of all of their people um, under control? How do they collect taxes? How do they issue laws? They have a bureaucracy or this administrative support system to make sure that whatever the king says happens throughout this very large territory, which is part of the empire. And so you'll hear about how did imperial rule happen? How did bureaucracy support this? And so those are really key terms that you need to know. Um, under an empire, there's going to be a whole bunch of government workers, part of the bureaucracy, people like tax collectors, record keepers, soldiers, judges, many different things. And also another interesting thing about an empire is that it typically has people from a variety of cultures, and that's going to be especially true with the one that we are going to look at today. Uh, it doesn't have to have one family line that rules all of the, and becomes king over and over kind of throughout one family line. It doesn't have to be that way. If it is within a single family line, we call that a dynasty. So if there's a dynasty, it means that it's an empire, everything that we just said, but it also is through one family line. So really good terms for you to understand is we are looking at an empire, what a bureaucracy is, and ultimately what a dynasty is. Now as we start this new unit, we're going to look at one empire in specific in this presentation. Now we've already gone and looked at the Qin dynasty, so we understood that was through one family line, which was a very short dynasty, and then the Han dynasty when we're looking at East Asia, the, the region of, Ch um, of China really. And so we looked at those two dynasties or empires, Qin being a little bit smaller and then Han becoming much larger and longer as well, with it being about 400 years. And so that was East Asia, as that's an AP world region. Um, then we also looked at South Asia. When we say South Asia, we are talking about India and Pakistan specifically. And when we looked at this, we looked at two empires, so the Mauryan Empire and the Gupta Empire. Remembering there's a gap of time between the Mauryan and the Gupta. India will struggle kind of throughout a lot of its history of having kind of a unified government, but actually being more regionalistic. And so we took looked at this as well. Now what we're going to look at today is we're going to zoom into the Middle East and we are going to look at the Persian Empire. Now the dates of the Persian Empire is about 550 BCE before the Common Era to 200 CE. So 550 all the way to 0 and then 0 to 220 CE. So it's a very long period of time. And the Persian Empire is going to be really, really large. When you think about the Persian Empire, one of the big things to remember is that it is going to really unite three of the earliest centers of civilization that we already looked at. It's going to unify the area of Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent. It's also going to unify Egypt and the Nile River Valley. And then it's going to come all the way up to the Indus River Valley as well, which is modern day Pakistan. And so we are gonna look at that ultimately. Now you can see how these overlap in time. You don't need to write this down, but just so you kind of understand that we're gonna kind of go back a bit in time. When we looked at the Qin and the Han, this is gonna be a few hundred years in the future from the Achaemenid and Persian Empire that we're gonna look at today, just so you kind of understand. Um, kind of the timeline of this and how, which empires are happening at the same time. Now when we're looking at the Persian Empire, we're going to be looking at Iran. And so when we're looking at Iran here, we're going to be looking at this region over here. And when we're looking at the geography, you can tell from this map already uh, that it's going to be very mountainous. You're going to see to the north, we're actually going to have a humid uh, more tropical area up here, but we're going to have deserts and mountains as well. And so when you're looking at the geography of this region, these are a few things that you want to make sure that you understand, that it's, it's very diverse even in its geography. And so when you're looking through and filling out maybe your pieces guide, that you understand this is true about this environment. Um, we're looking at the Persian uh, Empire. Now also, one of the things that you have to look at and kind of maybe an intellectual development, a way that they adapted 
uh, or kind of had a technological solution to their geographic dilemma of this really dry, arid place, is they came up with something called the Kanat system, which is basically a water management system to get water from aquifers underground, kind of like these underground aqueducts. And so they were able to adapt to their geography and be able to make this civilization really work because without water you can't survive. That's why we had early civilizations around river valleys. And so the Kanat system, a huge intellectual development, a huge technological development by the Persians that allowed them to be able to get water throughout their empire, and which is a huge thing. Now we're going to look at a few key leaders today. Uh, the two main ones we're going to look at is Cyrus the Great and then Darius. Um, all part of the Achaemenid Empire. And so when we look at Cyrus the Great, he is going to rule from 559 to 530 BCE. Remember, we're going closer to zero before Common Era. Uh, and we're going to see that, really, Cyrus is going to be considered a military genius. When you look at the map here, uh, again, you can see those different River Valley civilizations that are all united in this very large Persian Empire. And we're also going to see that he had to be a military genius to be able to basically combine these different regions as he kind of came in, took control um, after the empires that existed prior to this. So that's really important. Uh, he, and again, it's going to be the barely, it's going to, we're going to see the Persian Empire kind of expand to this at the largest extent. Maybe not all under Cyrus is some of the important things that you need to know about that. When we're looking at Cyrus, a few things that you need to understand about him is he was a super tolerant ruler. He was still authoritarian, but he allowed that the empire was super diverse, that people could practice different religions, that it, it wasn't just one ethnic group or racial group within the Persian Empire, but it was really diverse. Um, and he also is known, you can actually uh, look in the Bible, um, and you can look at the Torah, and you're going to see uh, that he, Cyrus the Great is talked about in there, and both the Bible and the Torah, and you're going to see that he's looked at very favorably um, because he freed the Jews. You remember, if you kind of understand a little bit of that background, uh, the Jews and those who were monotheistic, uh, really were kind of pushed aside by different empires. We know that they were pushed aside and then moved into Egypt, and they were under slavery, all these different things. And so here comes along this Persian emperor, this Persian king, Cyrus the Great, and he's going to free the Jews from their captivity, welcome them back to their homeland. And so Cyrus the Great is going to be seen as very favorable. Now, he's going to die in battle. He's going to be buried in Pasargad. Um, but then there's going to be some successors. Um, and not immediately is Darius, but Darius is the one we want to talk about today. Because when you start thinking about this really large kingdom of how big it's going to be, Darius is going to rule from 522 to 486. And when we're looking at this, he is going to expand that kingdom really, like we said, to the extent the biggest part of it. 14 million people were in this empire and so we see these different river valley civilizations all united now if you look at your study guide key concept 2.2 is really important for you to understand and 2.2 really talks about as you look at those uh, review questions in there the development of states and empires and so you need to understand the number and size of key states and empires that grew dramatically by imposing political unity on areas where previously there had been competing states. And so we've seen this, the three different civilizations, three different competing states. And also the other part of Key Concept 2.2 is that empires and states develop new techniques of an imperial administration or an imperial bureaucracy. And so that's those key words. Um, based in part on the success of earlier political forms. So how do you have this really large empire, this huge kingdom, the Persian Empire, and how do you keep 14 million people in check before you have things like TV and cell phones and ways to communicate quickly? Because he can only be in one spot at one time. And so how does Darius successfully be able to keep people under control. And so that's why this is really important and as you're looking at your study guide, but also just kind of understanding what Darius did. And so he built monumental places like Persepolis. It was a huge city. Uh, it's located in what is now Iran. It's really celebrated, impressive royal palace that exists here. And so we start seeing kind of these different artistic forms that came about. And so Remembering, he was able to use tax dollars in his large empire to be able to build some of these different things. 
Um, he's going to actually pay some workers to build these monumental works. Um, we see in other civilizations, lots of times they use slaves. Now, it's not to say that they use no slaves, but it is different in that slaves in the Persian Empire maybe were more used for agricultural works, but were not necessarily um, everywhere like we've seen maybe in civilizations like Egypt, what we're going to see in the Roman civilization as well. So just be aware of that as well. Um, to administer, getting back to that key concept, like how do you keep everybody in check? Um, what he did is he started out to separate and kind of divide, you almost want to think about like states, different ways to break up the Persian Empire into these different provinces, these satrapies, these different kind of states, if you think of it that way. And then over each of these satraps, these actual, uh, these, there's going to be like a governor of each of these provinces. And so we see that there are ways to be able to control the large emperor, empire by the king, in this case, Darius. And so we have to know these two terms, a satrapies and a satrap being the person, that governor that's over these individual smaller areas of the Persian Empire. Now, also, to be able to administer things, you need to be able to connect and get around really quickly. And so they built something known as the Royal Road. Again, because they have collecting taxes from the people in this large empire, up to 14 million people. This tax money not only can build Persepolis, um, it also is going to build the Royal Road. And the Royal Road, it's like 1,500 miles long. Uh, it's going to be really famous as we're looking at kind of this network of roads that is going to, well, a byproduct of this is trade. People are going to be able to trade super easy. And so even along this road, there's going to be kind of these outposts or uh, caravansary where they could basically have inns and markets along this and they could stop, they could trade horses, uh, if they have, you know, like a camel caravan, they could stop for the night and stay at these inns. And so Darius really made sure this would work. And so now not only are there ways that they've divided to rule this, now they can get around more quickly. And they're going to have ways where it's really going to encourage trade. They also kind of had a common currency at this time. So it really united the empire. This is how they kept everything in check. Um, he also, though, used something called imperial spies. Uh, some people might call them inspectors, but basically he had people that were ears and eyes of the king, that they would go check on these satraps to see if they were actually ruling like they should be. Are they really carrying out what Darius said? And so when you look at all of these together, we see that it was the way that they could administer this really large territory, this empire, um, and keep everything in check, which is super important as we look at that. And so, again, through the royal roads and everything else, these are the things that we want to make sure that you understand. Fill in your study guide with things that you can think through the pieces, what are the key aspects of Persian society, and then really understand these two leaders, Cyrus and Darius. And we're going to talk as we look at the conflict that's going to come between the Persian Empire and the Greeks. We're going to see another Persian ruler known as Xerxes. And so that's going to be uh, coming up soon, but hopefully this is helpful to give you a foundational knowledge about the Persian Empire.